Well, this is my new Vax HF 1400. I say new, it is June 2013. This was actually manufactured in 1998. But I've just purchased this brand new. If you want to see the unboxing video, you will find that in my other videos. But uh, if you don't like spiders, don't watch it. Suffice to say, I've cleaned it up and uh, it's more or less how I expected to receive it. But it wasn't, as you'll see from the unboxing video. But it's cleaned up now and ready for a demonstration. This is everything that came in the box. You get the main upright unit, this twin tank system, the upper tank is for clean water and shampoo, the lower tank is for the dirty water, you get the separate washing hose, you get a separate uh, washing extension tube, a bottle of Vax carpet cleaning solution, the Vax Fiber Flow washing head with this primer washing plate. Let's just see what it says on here. I didn't actually read this when I unboxed it. On some types of long pile or sculptured carpets, you may experience difficulty in cleaning solution flowing down the washing tube to the carpet washing head. Laying the washing hose and tubes on the floor should assist solution flow to the washing head. If you still experience difficulty, slide this washing plate onto your washing tool when setting up to wash, as assembled when you unpacked your vax. Once solution has reached the washing tool, pull the washing plate off to begin washing. So basically it primes the shampoo solution because this isn't a pump system like most, well, I think all now the vax cleaners, uh, that certainly the canister vax cleaners that used to use this sort of washing tool, most of them had a pump, the later models, um, but this one's sort of gravity fed. Um, so there's that. This, which I didn't know what was that for, what was it all about? Apparently that's for helping to remove hairs and stuff and threads that are caught around the brush roll. Not really sure how that works. That does store inside the dust compartment somewhere. Got the guarantee card. <laughs> I think Vax would have <sighs> quite a bit of fun if I was to send that off now. <laughs> date of purchase year 19 well it's not 19 it's 20 so I don't expect this has got going to really have a guarantee not with Vax anyway and I certainly even before demonstrating this I'm not going to recommend you buy it even if you can find one and they were prone uh, to be problematic but this, as, as a collector's piece, is a something of anyone who's interested in vax cleaners, this is quite an interesting thing to have. But if you want a, a carpet shampoo or a vacuum, don't buy it. We've got the Easy Guide. Now the HF1300, I believe, was more or less the same as this, but it didn't come with all the washing accessories. And it's very basic. Uh, instruction book not very good at all so it's okay if you can't read English as long as you can understand the pictures you're okay so we've got the cleaner itself let's just move the other bits out of the way so it just looks like a normal tools attached upright vacuum cleaner you've got your cord storage with the familiar hook that you turn down to release the cord which I believe is a 9 meter cord so it's a good length of cord on off switch your spill pickup tool your built in hose doesn't look very long but that is supposed to reach right up the stairs does stretch. It's got a funny feel about it, not like these stretch hoses of, of today. So maybe that will stretch right up the stairs. We will test that. Got your combined dusting tool, 
and furniture nozzle. For a combined tool, that's not bad. Nice soft brushes. Got crevice tool here, and there's two extension tubes here. There's a see-through part where the uh, hose elbows into the cleaner, so that's obviously to see if it gets blocked. You'll be able to see there, because that's the most likely place it would block. You've got your foot operated handle release. I've got a number here, which I assume won't be valid. For assistance, call VaxCare 0500 005 987. Uh, it's model 41010 and 1400 watts. So that's the machine. You've got variable electronic speed control here, and at the bottom. We've got your carpet height control to adjust the height of the, the brush. There's a bag full indicator there. And if we press this in, we can release the bag door. We've got fabric fleecy bag. Underneath there, there's a filter. This is also an exhaust filter here, which you can actually wash that. But the filter under the bag needs replacing, not washing, you can't, apparently you can't wash that one. And somewhere I'm supposed to be able to put this this I'm supposed to store somewhere inside the bag compartment according to the instructions. Let's just quickly check. Now there's a, there's a way of uh, checking for blockages. You can actually remove the hose. This part comes. This part will come out. There's a little collar here. I won't do it now, but you can just pull that out, and then the hose will just remove. Checking for any blockages. Not that this is going to be blocked. This is going to be used probably once for a video and then packed away. And I don't think I'll even be able to sell this on somehow. But, you know, it's interesting to, to have. Uh, it shows you how to set it up for carpet washing, which I will do. In case any of you want to see how you do it for carpet washing. How to check your belts. It is a twin belt machine. I thought it would be, um, because when the machine is in the upright position, the belt doesn't rotate. So it goes over a separate pulley. So suction still, so it's not, not twin motor, it's one motor. But, let's have a look, showing you how to wash the filters. I'm just seeing where this little tool goes. There's a little attachment. It's supposed to live inside the dust compartment. Now here we are. So it's that way up. Ah. I think it goes, oh hang on, no that's how it goes on, there's a, there's a little hole there, does it go on like that, can't see that staying on there, let's try it out this way, that might be better, so try and push it in, It's in there. Can't see that being of any use whatsoever. Only one dust bag supplied. Amazingly, you can buy bags, belts for this machine. Let's put the bag door. I did have trouble with this, and still I'm having a bit of trouble getting it. Oh, it's a bit easier now. Didn't seem at all powerful suction-wise compared to cleaners of today. So I don't think it's going to be very effective at washing carpets. But there we have it. I'll just have a quick look underneath for you. I have shown you this in the um, unboxing video, but you can see this again. As you can see, it's Chevron design brush roll. Fairly soft brushes, but fairly long. 
edge cleaning not not too bad but not not excellent they've even put a little brush here in between the belt guard and the rest of the brush so obviously that's on the second pulley now because it's in the upright position so when the machine's on that won't rotate it's only when the machine's in the operating position will that actually come into use that's a good safety feature you've got a quite soft furniture guard at the front I quite like the style of it I quite like the way it angles backwards somehow it's um let me just push that there it won't it won't support its weight it will topple as most upright cleaners would but it seems fairly well made it's actually made in the UK in Joitwich where vax cleaners used to be made but like I say the hose is supposed to be a stair cleaning hose I will show that so I'll do a demonstration of this machine in dry mode for you first and then I'll show you how to set it up for carpet washing and we'll just do a little test on the carpet alright so it's set up ready to use as a normal upright vacuum cleaner we'll just give it a quick going over I'm not doing a pickup demo because I don't really want to put a load of rubbish in here because it's not going to get used but like I say this is not a video for anyone who wants to buy one of these because there's only one place I found this and it's not some it's not a cleaner I'd recommend unless you're a collector especially if you're interested in Vax products I wouldn't I wouldn't touch this with a barge pole there are far better cleaners available nowadays right so we'll turn press the release lever get into the operating position the on off switch is behind here Start it off on low power and then we'll turn up the power. Well, it's fairly pleasant to use, not too noisy. It's groomed the pile, it's a very, very short pile carpet, but you can see it has groomed, well, I can see anyway, it's groomed it slightly. Um, so it's fairly easy to use, but it's, it's a 90s vacuum cleaner. Uh, technology has progressed since this machine, but it's okay. Let's have a look at the cleaning tools then at the back. It's a little reminiscent of the Hoover Turbo Power 2, some slight similarities. You've got the hose end. This is a bit tricky pulling it out here at the top because the spill pickup tool here sort of stops the hose from coming out. So here we have the hose and it's supposed to be a full stretch stair cleaning hose. Oops, nearly tripped over my satellite. I think that probably would reach right up the stairs. We'll give that a go. But the odd noise it's making. So that looks very short. 
Alright, we've got the uh, dusting brush, nice soft brush. And then that just pushes off. So you can use that for your upholstery in your stairs. And a little stiffer brush on the front. A small crevice tool. And your extension tubes, which fit into each other to, to make a, a longer tube. So we can fit that onto the hose end. That's it, let's just push it on. There we go. Let's pop that back. And we'll pop the upholstery slash stair nozzle on. Right, let's just see if this will reach right up a standard flight of stairs. So I've got the HF 1400 positioned at the bottom of the stairs. And we'll just see how far up it'll go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, these stairs are twelve. Most UK homes have thirteen. These are quite steep. So there are twelve. That is, yes, easy. And we'll call the landing the thirteenth step. Yes, that is pretty good. Even some modern cleaners now, where they claim to be stair cleaning hoses, they always fall a bit short. But that, I don't know what it's made of, but it is certainly a different sort of material to the stretch hoses you get now. And of course the stretch hoses nowadays tend to be that see-through stuff. Which, or yes, I know why they do it. It's so if it gets blocked, you can actually see that there's a blockage. But you can also see, hello Ellie, you can also see all the dust that lines it, which isn't very attractive. Now oh, where's she off to? Off, off, up to no good. Oh, and there's Molly there, having a look at what Daddy's up to. Hmm. Can you see your face? You can see her face in the glossy black finish, I think. So. Stair cleaning, yes it will do it. I'll just turn the machine on so we've got the suction and to see if it's going to fight back. Let's make sure it's on full power. Turn on. No, even with the machine on it was okay, although this, the suction isn't great. I don't know what the air wattage is of this, but the suction, judging by my reckoning, isn't very great. Let's just try and pull the, that's it, let's just turn it on and... Well, it does, it did hold onto my hand, but it didn't take much. It didn't take much jiggling about for it to fall off. Pretty poor suction. And so I can't see it leaving the carpet very dry for carpet washing, unfortunately, which is why I'm not, I'm not recommending this machine. But as, as a piece of history, as something that's interesting, something that flopped really for Vax, but this is, at least comes from the period when Vax were UK made. They became very successful with their orange tank style carpet washer. Certainly in the 90s it really took off. I had one of the earlier models, the 121 I believe, in the 80s, the late 80s. No, it wasn't the late 80s actually. It's probably about the mid 80s. No, it was the early 80s. I think it was 83, 84. I got my first 
Vax, the traditional orange one. It even had didn't even have a see-through washing head. It was a white washing head, so you couldn't actually see the solution coming out on the earlier models. And it had a white hose, I believe. So there we go. That's just a quick overview of the Vax for tool use and carpet cleaning. So now we're going to set it up as a carpet shampoo, which is what makes this cleaner rather different from any other upright. Before I set it up for carpet shampooing, I'll show you the spill pickup tool because I might get some complaints that I've not demonstrated this. So, as luck would have it, a dog has pee peed on the carpet. Well, not really, but this could happen. You could have a, an elderly dog or relative that's done a little bit of an accident, or you can knock over some drink and you've got some liquid on the carpet that needs to be sucked up. So, you don't have to set the machine up for carpet shampooing. It's still set up in the normal upright mode, but all we've done is attached the spill pickup tool. Now, it's got a maximum fill level there, and I believe it only takes 130 millilitres, so it's not a lot. But we'll just see how much of this liquid we can remove. Well, as you can see, it's picked up that. Now, I did actually put, this is showing how dirty these carpets are. I did just put clean water on the carpet, and that is the colour of the liquid that has come out. So, they are pretty dirty. These carpets don't get shampooed quite as often as mine at home. So, it will be interesting to see how the machine performs on carpet shampooing. We've got a little filter there in the top of this to empty it. There's a little button here. You press that in, and then you take out this end piece, and then that just tips down the sink or into your loo. So that's the spill pickup tool. Let's set the cleaner up now for carpet washing. Right, so I'm now ready to set this machine up for carpet washing. I filled the clean water tank with warm water and carpet cleaning solution. The instructions are a bit vague, so I had to measure how much water it took. It takes about four litres. So I'm using Vax Ultra solution in this, and that's 40 mil of solution per litre. So that's been done. The first thing to do is to remove the hose from the cleaner here and then you just pop the hose on the top of the hook, the cord storage hook, just lift the hose up here. Then we need to put the dirty water tank, there's a metal bracket here, so we need to put this metal bracket on top of the little bit at the bottom, that's it, that's in place. Then you want to divert the suction of the cleaner into here. So all you do is pop the hose into the top. Oh, I believe you do, but that's not that's not staying in very well. Let's just have a that comes out, but I don't want to take that out. There is a float valve inside there. If you've got a Vax canister, you'll be familiar with a little ball valve that lifts up as the tank fills with water. That will cut the suction off to prevent any water being sucked in to the cleaner. Now that, well, doesn't seem to fit very firmly into there. 
I'll just uh, pause for a moment and check the instruction book because that doesn't seem very secure. Right, well I've had a look at the instruction book, it doesn't say anything, so that's it. It, it would easily come out of that. That's not held in very securely at all. So let's just try and pull that down a bit further. Hopefully that will stay in place. It does seem odd. But anyway, that's how it is. So, now we need to put the clean water tank on the top here. I wonder why this machine flopped. Right, so that's there. That sits on there. Next thing we need to do is attach the washing hose. So, we've got familiar Vax washing hose with a three lug fitting. That just plugs into here. It's got a nice suction seal. We'll just turn that whichever way, that way until it's locked. Then you need to take the solution tube here. It's got a little metal weight on the end. That needs to go inside the clean water tank. And then we've got a cap here. A little orange cap that goes on the top. And you must make sure that that is on securely. Like it is there. There's a few kinks in this hose, so I might have trouble getting the solution out. Already, that's just come away. So that's perhaps when it's on, it will hold in place. Hold, it holds it a bit, but not very much. Just see what the suction's like through the hose. Not too bad. So at least the suction is getting to the end of the hose. So we need to attach now this tube. So that goes on to here. And then we've got to attach this solution pipe that just pushes in to the hole there on the handle. And then finally we attach the washing tool to the end of the tube and then the pipe pops into the top. Right, we're going to prime this first, which means basically we've got to pump the shampoo solution through the tube until we see it at the nozzle end. So to prime, we're going to move this special priming plate over the end. So that blocks off the suction. So basically the suction of the cleaner is going to help pull the shampoo through to the end of the nozzle. So we'll switch on and wait for that to happen. Right, that was quicker than I thought. It did, does help if you turn the uh, water liquid with coming out. It does help if you actually turn the nozzle on. There's a little lever here. You need to make sure that it's off now. Let's just straighten up that. There we go. So it's primed and ready for carpet washing. So let's give it a go.
Well, I've just cleaned a small area of carpet uh, with the Vax in washing mode. And what a slow and laborious job it is to use compared to upright carpet washers that we have now that have rotating brushes. It looks, you know, it's got some dirt up. We'll see how much dirt is in the tank. But my feet are sopping wet and this carpet. I've just kneeled down on the carpet. Yep. Wet knees. So the suction isn't great on this and it's a good job I have another carpet washer that I'll go over this area and suck up all the excess liquid with. But it's done the job. It's worked but as I say it's left the carpet very wet. We now are going to remove the dirty water tank and pour that down the sink and just see how much dirt we've got out of this carpet. Right, so to remove the tank we'll first take out the solution tube. No idea how much solution I've used but certainly not the full four litres. We'll remove the tank. There's loads still left in there so I haven't used very much at all. Possibly about a litre but uh, I was losing the will to live, it was taking so long. Right, so we'll just remove the hose and take the tank out now. There's some liquid in there. And I assume we just tip the dirty water out of the hole. It's got two carry handles either side. So we'll just take it into the downstairs bathroom. And see how much muck we've got. Well, you know, that's done quite a good job. Despite the fact it has left an awful lot of carpet shampoo solution, I'm sure in the carpet, the carpet is sopping. That would take at least a day to dry, even more probably. So I can't recommend it. But I knew this area of carpet would be dirty. My mum has had grandchildren to stay, loads of dogs, and the carpet's not been shampooed for a while. So yes, it looks better, but boy, it takes a lot of work. So I'm gonna get my Vax, well my mum's Vax Oasis complete out and just go over this area and dry it. And, uh, but you know, it's not done bad. For when this model came out, upright carpet washers weren't all that common. I think Hoover had the brush and wash out, which is the first upright carpet washer I owned, which is a very good machine, which is based on the Vax Oasis that I have now. But there we have it. There's the Vax HF 1400 carpet washing system upright vacuum cleaner. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and I'm sure I'll be back with a lot more fun and excitement. Yes, the Vax has just lost the will to live. So it's going to be a bit of a clean up for this Vax. Dry it and then pack it away until I don't know when. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.